Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code to add us on Roku is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Same thing for iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me say the place to make profits, really always, whether it's in sports or whether it's in life, is in the difference between what the public thinks and what's really going on. Right? I don't believe you can follow the crowd and make great profits. I'm not a long-term believer in momentum investing. Right? I actually believe that the way you really set yourself up is by doing your own independent research, breaking with the crowd, coming to your own conclusions, and then figuring out whether the crowd is right about a certain fighter. Right? Now, I believe, contrary to most, because I know this guy looks great in the ring. I know this guy has a great amateur pedigree. But I see storm clouds out there for Arthur Baturbioff, the light heavyweight. Let's talk about it. Right first, understand. Right, title unification is a great thing in boxing. Right? It's great to look at a division and know that the champs are fi facing each other. Right? Elites fighting elites, how do we lose? But understand, while the fans benefit, other guys get shut out. Let's look at the light heavyweight division for a moment. You have Jean Pascal fighting Sergei Kovalev. Right? Kudos to Kovalev, by the way. Right? Kovalev's idea of being an elite fighter is literally in taking on tough opponent after tough opponent, right? Before it was Bernard Hopkins, now it's Jean Pascal. Understand the winner of this fight then ends up against Adonis Stevenson, right? Let's congratulate guys for fighting real fights and tough opponents, right? But understand the flip side. With all these guys fighting each other, is that guys like Arthur Baturbioff, Guys who are up and coming end up shut out on the outside of this. Right? He can't fight John Pascal because Pascal's fighting Kovalev. He can't fight Kovalev who's fighting Pascal. He's not going to fight Adonis Stevenson because, of course, Stevenson can say, Hey, what more do you want from me? I just had a fight and I'm scheduled to fight the winner of this fight. I have to take care of my titles. So Arthur Baturbioff is really shut out. Understand, too. Right? Like Amir Khan, Baturbioff is a Muslim. What that means is that he's going to be unavailable later this year during Ramadan. Right? So understand, if Arthur Baturbioff were the best fighter in the world, he likely is not going to get a shot at the light heavyweight title anytime soon. And let me say, he's lucky he's not getting a shot. Let's say he were to fight the other champion, Jurgen Bramer. I'm telling people that Bramer is one of the most underrated chess players in the entire sport. I don't believe a fight against Bramer would even be competitive. I would expect Bramer to get a stoppage in that fight. I don't believe Baturbioff is ready for Bramer. I would encourage people to research Bramer's amateur record. Now understand, Bramer is one of the bad boys of boxing. When you look into his past, you're going to find that there's a difference between guys posing as gangsters and guys who really have had problems. This is a guy who's really had problems. Now my point to you is simply this. Bramer, even with his problems has been champion for a while now. Think about it. He made it to the top and he's been champion. That's how good he is. Right? So let's just say, if I were Baturbioff's handlers, I wouldn't want to deal with Bramer. He's too good. 
the holes in our fighters game would be exposed right understand Baturbiov has had less than 10 pro fights understand his pro fights haven't been against great fighters he did fight Tavares Cloud I believe even Tavares Cloud fans would say that Tavares Cloud is not at the top of his game these days right it's the twilight for Tavares Cloud right and so my point is simply this Berturbiov's going to be shut out of fighting some elite light heavies who let's face it the fans are supporting for fighting each other I believe the other champion is simply too dangerous for him right now so I don't believe he's gonna hit the top floor at light heavy because he's having weight problems take a look at him folks look at his trunk look at the trunk of his body right keep in mind the guy is six feet tall five eleven and a half six feet tall there is no way with that body that this guy will be able to comfortably make weight at 175 much longer in other words it's now or never for him at 175 pounds right and unfortunately he shut out you understand I believe you know if you look hard you're gonna find out that this guy and he was a decorated amateur at light heavy has been a light heavyweight for too long right you need to pay attention to where guys have fought in the past understand in the 2012 Summer Olympics Baturbiov fought at heavyweight right he's draining his body to make light heavyweight I believe he's gonna have the same problem I expect Saul Alvarez to have right now I know <laughs> the public disagrees with me let the chips fall where they may I'm not trying to follow the public but understand just like I feel Canelo will be small for a middleweight I believe Baturbiov is gonna have problems at cruiser right cruiser is a different country than light heavyweight just to understand the gap in weight between light heavyweight and cruiser it's huge this is not the gap this is not the seven pound difference between junior welter and welter right this is not the six pound gap in fact this is not the six pound gap between junior middle and middle or the eight pound gap between middleweight and super middleweight right understand light heavy is 175 understand that cruiser these days is 200 pounds there's a huge gap huge right and understand the men are physically much bigger than they are at light heavy you're dealing with a different level of fighter I believe Baturbiov as he leaves light heavyweight and ventures into the cruiserweight division is gonna have problems right understand his style is that of a puncher he's been walking through guys look at the Tavares cloud film he's not that gifted defensively he's getting by on front foot aggression right in my opinion he's not a technician I believe that if you try to face a Marco Huck right a great athlete at cruiserweight with an explosive straight right hand if you try to face a Marco Huck and you try to walk him down you're asking for trouble if you're trying to face a Johan Hernandez and you have a problem getting by a jab you're asking for trouble right so I believe size wise Perturbioff is gonna have some problems now I know 
I'm in the minority. I'm just giving you my point of view. I understand he's unbeaten. I understand it's all knockouts. Right? I'm just here to tell you that you need to look past the record at the guy's past. Right? If he's comfortable at light heavy, given that he won the European Amateur Championship at light heavyweight twice, right? Why would he venture into the heavyweight division for the Olympics? Food for thought. Now I have a film clip in my favorites here on YouTube. I just posted it there and it's Paterbiov's last fight against the guy I'm actually more impressed with even though he got knocked out in the second round by Paterbiov. And that's his last opponent Jeff Page Jr. Right now let me say this right in terms of Baturbioff, the end of the first round is disturbing. You've heard me say that Baturbioff doesn't have great defense. I believe you really want to judge a fighter by what he's trying to accomplish. His awareness in the ring. Right? If a guy has a hand up, and somebody threads the needle and hits him somehow right by his guard with a great punch and the guy goes down okay great you can say well you know what he had his defensive guard up right I would encourage people to look at not the first fight but the second fight between Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez you're gonna see that Marquez gets dropped in that fight people forget that he gets dropped in something like the third round. But if you look at the film, you're going to see that Manny Pacquiao threads the needle. Right? It's a Tom Brady type pass, right? Looks to me like Marquez has a hand up or has angles figured out. And Manny Pacquiao somehow gets through with the left hand. Right? Now let me say this. Conversely, I believe you can tell that a front foot heavy guy is not thinking about defense when he gets hit with punches and you don't even see his hands up right the guy doesn't even have a defensive construct up he's caught off guard he's just hit he's open Jeff Page at the end of the first round drops Arthur Beterbiev drops him it's a right hand folks Right, it's at the end of the first round. Maybe Paterbiov thought that rounds were two minutes and 55 seconds long and not three minutes long. But let's just say Paterbiov gets hit flush. Gets hit flush. His hands aren't close to being up. He has no guard for the punch. He has no guard for the punch. Page could have hit him with the left hand. Page decided to hit him with the right hand. He drops Arthur Perturbioff. Now let me say this. Fighters who have to lose weight to make weight, their punch resistance drops. Let me say this too. Jeff Page is an unbeaten or was an unbeaten fighter. Right? I know he's fought a lot in the Kansas area. Okay, fair enough. Maybe he's not, you know, a national fighter. When you look at his corner, you're going to see Janady Golovkin's trainer, Abel Sanchez. Right? Sometimes you have to follow the superstar trainers. Right? Because they'll be in an unknown's corner and the trainer's a brand. You look in Page's corner, you see Abel Sanchez, you understand Page has something going on. Right? Let me also add this about Jeff Page. I know he lost this fight. He has great legs. He has great legs. If he could work out, you know, ways to win rounds on the move. Right, I believe Jeff Page could be a force at 175 pounds. Just know this though, he fights Arthur Perturbioff, he drops Perturbioff at the end of the first round. Now Perturbioff's response is, hey, he woke me up. Right, I was lackadaisical in that first round. He's beyond lackadaisical defensively. 
He looks green to me. Understand, Baturbiov isn't 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. No, he's something like 29 years old, folks. He's an older guy. He doesn't have defensive instincts. Right? He's not a guy who intuitively, second naturedly, is rolling with punches and has a hand up. He's not even rolling when he gets hit with Jeff uh, Page's punch. Right? Page just comes forward on his front foot and Baturbiov's like this. Right? So let's just say, also, if you look at his history, the guys he's fought, Tavares Cloud will give him that fight. The other guys weren't really threats to him. Right? So let's just say this. I'm going to break with the crowd. I see an upset waiting to happen with Arthur Baturbiov. I'm going to watch Baturbiov's weight. If he moves up to cruiser, keeping in mind the big jump between light heavyweight and cruiser, I'm going to expect him to run into problems because he's too flat-footed. He's not defensively gifted. I wonder if a KO puncher can survive at Cruiser against the guys who are out there right now. Right? Understand, too, some of the guys at Cruiser, even the guys who are a little bit older, are master card players. Right? Maybe this version of Danny Green doesn't beat Danny Green from a few years ago. Right? Maybe Danny's a little bit past his prime. I understand Danny Green might officially be retired. But, oh, you better believe I'd take Danny Green over Arthur Baturbioff. No question, because I know Danny Green's a master chess player. Right? Baturbioff strikes me as an obvious front foot heavy guy. I'm not sure if I fully understand all the hype. Yes, he has big punching power. Right? Absolutely. He catches Jeff Page. Page goes down a few times. Right? But look at the punches. Right? The punches, they're all, you know, punches to me that are obvious. They have a little bit of a loop. The hand speed isn't blinding. So I'll say this. Right? I've criticized some other guys who are in the news who are highly touted. I have a video up here online criticizing Zo Shimei. Right? The uh, Olympic gold medalist. Right? I don't, I'm not as excited about Zhou Shimei as I am about other fighters. Right? Let's just say I'm not as excited about Arthur Perturbioff, and I understand he spars with Jean Pascal. Good for him. But I'm not as excited about Arthur Baturbiov as I am other fighters, including the guy he just blew out, Jeff Page. I could see a Jeff Page, right, working on a jab and defense, just figuring out how to, you know, score a little bit more. Keep in mind, he wins the first round, right, loses the second round. Okay, fair enough. But if Jeff Page can just figure out a few more things, I could see Jeff Page becoming a threat to the elites at 175 faster than I can figure out a way for Arthur Perturbioff to become a threat for the elites at Cruiser where I believe he's headed. Now I know people who research amateur fighters Know that Baturbiov and Kovalev know each other, trained together at four time, have been in the ring together as amateurs. Okay, fair enough. This is professional fighting. It's not the amateur ranks. Right? Kovalev looks like he makes light heavyweight easily. His game seems to translate to the pro ranks better to me than Baturbiov's. Right? Understand, too, amateur fighting... Given Baturbiov's level of aggression, and I know Baturbiov has beaten people like Ishmael Shalak in the amateurs. Fair enough. Right? 
In the amateurs, I can see a guy like this with an opponent who knows he only has a few rounds, right? I could see a guy like this dominating because he doesn't have to worry about a guy moving for longer than a few rounds, right? If you have weight problems, as I suspect this guy does, right? Just look at his trunk. He and Page look like they're in two different weight classes, right? A guy with weight problems is going to have those weight problems show up later in fights, right? As the fight goes forward, as we get to the later rounds, that's when a guy who struggled to make weight is going to have stamina problems. Now, let me just pull up Baturbiov's record. I'm going to give you the number of rounds this guy has gone in his professional fights. First fight, two rounds. Second fight, three rounds. Third fight, one round. Fourth fight, four rounds. Fifth fight, one round. Sixth fight, two rounds. Seventh fight, two rounds. This guy hasn't even made it to the fifth round of any fight he's had. Now I know it shakes people up when I question guys with 100% KO ratios like Arthur Perturbiov and Deontay Wilder. I'm just here to say when you get to the elite levels, when you're in the ring against elites, sooner or later you're going to be in the second half of a fight. Seventh round, eighth round, ninth round, tenth round. You can be a great five-round fighter. You could be a great six-round fighter. You could have been a great amateur. That might not translate into the pros. Look at the foot speed gap, and it's profound between Baturbioff and Jeff Page. It's profound. You would think Jeff Page was Ray Leonard, right? If Baturbiev goes to cruiserweight, how's he even going to get close enough to Steve Cunningham? I'm a skeptic of Arthur Baturbiev. We'll see what happens going forward, just like I'm a skeptic of uh, Zhou Shiming. Let me say this. I don't mean to criticize every person who drops weight in their, you know, when they make the transition from amateur to pro, right? Clearly, Timothy Bradley, Sean Porter, countless others have dropped weight and have been successful. But understand, this guy is a power puncher, right? This guy fought as a heavyweight in the Olympics. He's now as a light heavyweight. And he lacks defense, right? He doesn't have the overall boxing skills of, let's say, a Bradley or a Porter, right? This guy right now is shut out of the top rungs of the light heavyweight division, right? He's shut out because other guys are fighting each other, right? I don't believe he's going to stay at light heavyweight long enough. I believe he's small and not athletic enough for cruiser which is a huge gap. In fact, this guy probably has more of a problem than I suspect Saul Alvarez is going to have at 160, and I'm not optimistic on Saul Alvarez's future as a middleweight. That's my view. Let me hear yours. You don't have to agree with me. The world doesn't here, right? I'm criticizing a guy with a 100% KO ratio, right? I'm also not sanguine. On Deontay Wilder's prognosis as a heavyweight. Let me hear your take. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.